Hey what's going on guys my name is George and this is SAS Master. Today we're going to check out WP Fluid Forms Pro. Now this comes from a well established company so you know that it's going to work correct and it's going to be stable. So one of the key benefits of WP Fluid Forms is that they just upgraded to the Form Builder 3.0. So you, it's so easy to use that in the process of this video we're actually going to see an overview and in that process we're going to learn how to actually use it. So it's that easy. Now, if you guys want to grab the deal that's going on right now, the link is going to be in the description. Now, this is their main page right now, and I want to show you two key things in this page before we head on over to the actual form builder. So let's just head a little bit down here. And one of the key things that I want to show you is how fast this plugin is. So they show a comparison chart of other form builders, and you can see it's in second place, Flute Forms, and it just weighs 32 kilobytes. So it's just so small and so tiny that it's fast to load. And this is key because you have so many things going on in your site and so much other plugins that you have in your WordPress that you want to keep it light. So WP Fluid Forms does that for you. Now, other key benefit that I want to show you about this is the actual integrations that this has. So they got third party integrations with most of the CRMs. But what I love about this is that they integrate with Zapier and webhooks. Just having those two, you know that you can do basically anything. I mean, you could just connect to any app. Zapier makes it unlimited, uh, like unlimited thinking, like connections that you want with your form builder. All right, so those are the key benefits right now. So let's he actually head on over to the form builder. And what you gotta do, once you purchase it, you just download the, the zip file and you install it here on your WordPress site. So you head on over to plugins, add new, and this is where you would add it and you would install it. Once you install it, you would head over right here and you have Fluid Forms Pro. Now in this case, I already got two forms built, but we're gonna show you one really quick. Let's add a brand new form right here. And you have the option to actually create one from blank or you can use templates. Personally, I love templates. I don't wanna waste time and I don't actually have time to be thinking what I should write or what I should do, what section should I put or what check boxes. So this helps me out, just kinda tell me what I want and just modify small things so you can actually search from categories right here so you got products education marketing nonprofit and a whole bunch of other ones let's check out marketing and you got these options for marketing let's just head on over to this one client satisfaction survey form so let's create a form let's grab that all right successfully created and here it is this is how you're going to be created and this is the form builder 3.0 so i this is what i love it's so easy to use and so clear on how it's going to work if you hover over things, you get the options. Check this out, I'm hovering. I can move it around if I wanna move it down here or just keep it there. If I wanna edit this section, so for example, let's just see right here, it says, which product did you purchase? In this case, remember it's a survey. So I'm gonna edit this right here and we get the options. So we can change the title if you want. So for example, I'm just gonna go crazy right here and you can see it updates automatically and you can see what's going on. Now, how do you want it to show? Like default, gonna be top, left, right hide label or keep it default admin field label you can add that there placeholder you can select you got the options over here from down here check these out so if i edit this one it is going to open this one so we can remove so let's just say custom response let's remove that and just say this one is like support just an example right that looks bad support that's an option right there do you want to make this field required or not so let's just say yes and see how it adds a little star now we all know when we head over to a form if we see a little, like a little red star we know that we have to fill that in or else we can't proceed so you can make that required or not error message field so field is required if you want to if when they try to submit and it doesn't go next that's a, that's the uh, message that it's going to send you we got more advanced options like container class if you want to modify this a little bit more make it more customized help message so if you want to see us help message right here so let's see it right there see how it's adding the message here on the left on the bottom that could be for example like uh, please select the last purchase so maybe they made like I don't know four to five purchases what you really want to know is the last purchase they made just in case you're talking about a product and you have like five listed you can just set like a help message name attribute that's the, the message the box that is called Condition, conditional logic, yes or no, we can keep it at no. And let's go back to input fields. So by default, we have this template already built to work 
from. But if we want to add more, we got all these general fields. Now you can see how it's easy and straightforward. Like you can say, hey, name fields. So what's so cool about this, that when you use a name field, it, you know that it's bait for text and it, um, it's already enabled the algorithm so it works with that. So if they put like something that doesn't go there, like for example, email address, like if it doesn't see that at uh, sign or dot, it's not gonna proceed because it's no, it, it knows it's not an email. So it's pretty cool that it already knows what it's going to use. It's gonna be simple text, mask input, text area, address field, country list, so for example, let's add country list. Check this out. We're going to edit it. And you got by default, you can change the title, the admin field. Also, where do you want to change this? Keep it default. But we have the advanced options for this specific box. So for example, right here, we can add a default country. Let's just say, for example, me, I'm based in Mexico. And most of the people who are going to visit my site are from Mexico. So what would I do? I would put like Mexico as a default. And if not, they say would select another one. So you'll make it easier for them in that sense. So you can add a default country. You can show all, hide these or show only show these. So for example, let's just say, hey, you know what? I am only working in North America. So I want to like have like Canada, United States, uh, Puerto Rico, or Mexico, and just like show those countries only and don't give like the whole list of the country. So you have that option also. So you can have the easiest way just like hide these or only show these. Help message also like we saw and we conditional logic, yes or no. So in a sense, we have a whole bunch of fields that we can ask like radio button, checkbox, multiple boxes, time and date, website URL, image upload, file upload, Check those things that not all foreign builders have. So you can people can actually upload an image. Let's just say, for example, if you're doing like a support uh, form builder, let's just say in the support support one, you wanna you want them to upload the error or the receipt of the purchase. So you actually give them like the the support that they actually need. But you know that hey, okay, so it's a real uh, sales that we made, and the guy actually purchased it. So we give them support. These are just examples, right? Custom HTML. Check that out phone, email field, and we got the advanced fields. So you can hide, hide hit in a field, section break, short code, terms and conditions, action hook, form steps, rating, checkbox rates, GDRP agreement, password field, repeat field. In this one, one of my favorites one is the form step. What does this do? Well, have you ever like went to a form and you like filled out like four questions and then you hit next and the form continues, instead of having one long form, you make it in steps. What does this do for you? Well, psychologically, it makes people think that it's gonna be faster to fill in the form, so that helps you out because you actually want people to fill out the form. So in that sense, if, it's, if it looks shorter, people will fill it out. If it looks really long, it's like, oh, forget it, I, I'm not filling this. So what steps does, I just grab it and drag it over here, and it breaks right here. So you can see end of page. So what this does, it, we're, we're gonna test it out, don't worry. What this does is that I break I break it right here, so they're only gonna fill these two and it's gonna break to the next page and it's gonna go to this right here. I can actually break as many times as I want and just make it like easier for them if they want. So I, I do like three to four like check boxes and, and fill out text forms and I break. That's, that's what I would do and I would recommend to anyone. Not make, don't make a long form, please. <laughs> All right, so that's breaking. I break it two times. And like I said, there's so many options there. And you got the containers, like two column container, three column container. They, I mean, they really went all out with this 3.0 version, trust me. And like I said, it's really stable and I like how it looks. And by default, the background is transparent. So it's gonna look white if your site is white. If not, we're gonna be able to edit it. And I'll show you that in Divi. So you, we got this ready, you checked it out. Did you see how easy that was? We can actually preview it over here. Now, what you're not going to be able to preview right now is the breaks, the, the steps, but we're going to actually see it when we integrate it. So right now, this is how it would look. All right, so check it out. All right, that's there. This is there. All right, cool. Preview looks fine. I'm, I'm good with that. This is the HTML code that we're going to use to actually embed it on the site. But we actually have more options to go. So we got the settings and integrations. Oops, got to save this form. Save it out. All right, that's saved. Settings and integrations. So right here in settings and integrations is like from for this form we got all these options. So you got like a sample page to a page or to a custom URL that you can send them. Message to show. So like thank you for your message. We will get 
get in touch with you shortly. In this case, for example, it's not a message. Thank you for like your form. Thank you for, or uh, we'll get back in 24 hours. Like if it were support like form, that would be it. After form submission, would you hide form? Do you want to reset the form? I recommend that it's hidden because you don't want them to fill it over again. I don't know. It just depends with what you want. Form layout, so you can say top, left, or right. Help message position, so beside the label on the tool tip like we saw it, or below the input field, or focus on elements. So if you hover over it, it'll show the message. Error message position, also is like below the input field or stacked after the form. Asterisk position, that's the little like star that we saw. Then we have number of entries, so you want to maybe limit this. I would limit it because you don't want spammers. So I would say like one or two, it just depends what type of form it is. Uh, form scheduling, so let's just say you're using the form for an upcoming product, right? So it's like it's upcoming and it's, it's going to start off like in the next week and it's only going to last two weeks. So you would set the time frame and it's going to show within that time frame. So that's a pretty cool option. Next thing we got is required users to log in. So they got to log in to actually fill in the form if you want this. So for example, if it were support form, I'd say it's cool for them to log in because you actually know it's a user. And deny empty submission, so no, they won't be able to use it. All right. Next we got is email notification. By default, it's to the admin notification email of this WordPress site, but you can add your own right here. So add notification. Other confirmations, you can add more right here. We got the Zapier connection. You can add your webhook also webhook right here custom css and jss so like if you really want to go really customized you can do this right here you can head on over to their support forms and everything you can check out all you can do with this wp fluid forms and we got the marketing and crm integrations remember we saw all of those integrations that we had uh available in this case i have connected for example mailchimp uh, feed and send fox so that's why i have that option but there's many more where would you see these you would see them in settings. We'll head on over there in a little bit, but let's go ahead over and embed this one to our WordPress site. So I'm going to copy this, should be copied. And this is my site. I'm using Divi Builder. If you guys want to grab the lifetime deal of Divi Builder, please head on over to the link in the description also, because I'm going to show you what you can do. So let's just say I want the form to be right here. In Divi Builder, I would create this section. It's a full row. And what I'm going to embed is a code because that, that's what WP Fluent Forms gives us. So we're going to add a code. And each form will have its own specific code. So I'm going to add this one. And here is the form. Check it out. So remember I told you it's going to be sectioned. So there it is. We got the next button. If it were in one section, it would just say submit. So let's just say, hey, you know what? That looks pretty like, you know, that doesn't look satisfactory. So we can edit this right here. That's a cool thing about uh, Divi that we have so many options. I'm sure all of them have it, but you gotta like check out how they use it. Let's just say orange. Oh, that looks nasty. Well, they all look nasty right now. So let's just say that orange one. All right, and get to design. Add some border. Everything's like gonna be rounded. So I'm rounding off the corners in this. I'm just showing you this because you're gonna see how easy it is. So I'm gonna make it look inside so it's not at the edge. There we go. Let's do a little bit more customization. Let's add a box shadow. All right. So like I said, that the color is pretty ugly, like the orange. But you can see how we customize it, and we can embed it really easy in a WordPress site. Now, if you were using the default builder from WordPress, well, you just add the code right there. You select the section that adds an HTML section, and there you would add the code, and it's, it's that easy. You build it on the WordPress uh, form builder, and you just embed that little code and it's working. So let's just save this one because I want to show you how it's going to look because remember we said it's in sections. So we're going to go to next. Wait for that to load. All right. So we exited. Let's go. Here is my form. I'm going to select this and I'm just going to say test. We're going to go next. See that right there? Select any country, support. Test two, next. Would you use our products or blah, blah, blah. Remember this form is just for testing purposes. And voila, that has been submitted. Did you see how easy that was? So it's, I built it, make doing this video. I embedded it doing this video and it's actually working. Now, what other options do we have with this? So let's just say 
let's close this right here. Let's go back to fluid forms. This form that I created right now, so this one right here, we can go to preview. Wait, no, sorry, not preview. My bad, my bad. We'll go to entries. So in this entries, what we just did right now, we can actually view it. So we'll, we would see all the list of entries that people have submitted right here. And you can see what I've answered. This is the list of what I've answered. You can see where it's coming from. So you got the, the source and the IP, which I will hide. And we also have, let's go back, go back right here, because I wanna show you how we can view the visual reports. So if we wanna view the general visual reports of all the forms that have been submitted, we click right here, visual forms. And once you have a whole bunch of forms filled out, well, you would see a whole bunch of things like what label did they use and how many total of that these labels you would have right here. So you see, this is one of the questions. The country is right here. So if there were like five, six countries that were submitted, you would see them in a pie chart. Now, if you don't like pie chart, you can see the graph this way in bars or left to right. So it just depends how you want to visualize them. And you would have this in a neat form and way that you can actually use. So this is pretty cool because it's actually like built so you can print it out. So you can print this report and it'll look nicely. Trust me, this is cool. All right, so we saw all that. We saw how to build it. We saw how to embed it. We saw how to like visually edit the, how it looks. And let's head on over to settings. These are one of the cool things because this is where we're gonna actually enable everything that we're gonna use on our form builders. So we got these like the general settings right here. You got all these options like global layout settings, miscellaneous and permissions. So who has permissions to build? You can add your reCAPTCHA right here. So reCAPTCHA, sorry, filled in automatically, but you would actually put your reCAPTCHA API right here. If you want to do that, why would you want that? Because you want to avoid spam. You don't want robots and bots like just filling all the forms and saturating your site with like forms that don't even like matter to you. Next thing we have, we added these ones, settings, but we're going to go to modules. So here in modules is where we enable what we're going to be able to use. So why is this like off automatically? Because you don't want to have a, whole, a list of all these modules that you're not even using. So in my case, I have enabled Webhooks, Zapier, Sendfox, and MailChimp. Those are the ones that I use and I want them to be able so I can add my API and use them. But we got all these options that we can enable. So you got the most popular ones like Active Campaign, Campaign Monitor, Constant Contact, HubSpot, I mean, MooSend, Eye Contact, like the ones I told you, Zapier and Webhooks are like, I mean, those are the must. You got Twilio. Twilio is a pretty cool option because if you activate it and you use Twilio, let's just say you want, it's a really, really important form. And once they fill it out, you actually want to get a text message because emails might take longer or you want to have like two messages sent out to you, one for email and one for like a text message because you really want to get that client really quick. So you, you can enable Twilio and you can have a text message sent to your phone. So that's cool. And we have Slack. Slack's pretty popular, so you can use that also. And Gist. So you got all these options and they're adding more and more. What's so cool about all of this in WP Fluid Forms? Well, when you buy it, anything that update updates is included. So that's pretty awesome. So it's pretty straightforward. It's easy to use. There's so many things that you can do and customize. There's so many options and templates available that it's just so easy and straightforward to use. Out of like, how would you say that? In, in my experience, about five form builders, I think this one's the best. And I'm not being set to say that. I mean, I just feel it because I, I've tested it, I'm using it, it's easy to use, and it works. It's, just, it's plain and simple. And the price is obviously unbelievable. Having unlimited sites and not worrying about, oh man, I got I made a brand new site or I got a brand new client that I built a site and I gotta pay all over again. I don't have any of those problems because I already paid for it and I have unlimited sites and all the updates are gonna be available for me. So that's pretty awesome. Well guys, if you guys wanna grab WP Fluid Forms Pro, the link is gonna be in the description. The link is an affiliate link. It's not gonna cost you one cent more. It's actually gonna help you out because it's gonna take you to any discount site that's available right now. So it just gives me a small commission and it's not gonna cost you any more. Well guys, my name is George, this is SaaS Master, and I'll see you guys later.